equipment to manufacture, distribute, and sell Simba Minis munches in Zimbabwe by October 2025 and in Zambia by April 2026. This follows our recent announcement to manufacture and package Cheetos in Morocco by May 2025. These agreements complement our existing distribution of PepsiCo portfolio, marking another significant step forward in our strong symbol symbiotic partnership. Additionally, we are pleased to share that we have commercial, commenced commercial production of carbonated soft drinks and packaged drinking water at our Greenfield facility in DRC. With the region representing an untapped market for PepsiCo, this expansion offers a huge growth opportunity for us. In line with our dividend policy, the board of directors has approved an interim dividend of 25% of the face value of rupees 5 per share. Additionally, the board has considered and recommended the subdivision split of existing equity shares of the company from one equity share with a face value of rupees 5 each fully paid up into such number of equity shares having face value of rupees 2 each fully paid up. This is subject to the approval of equity shareholders of the company. This is intended for wider retail participation. With strong performance in a key quarter, we are on track to deliver healthy double-digit growth in the calendar year. India remains a high-demand market with massive growth potential driven by a growing consuming class and a young population. To cap capitalize on this demand, we are focused on further strengthening our infrastructure distribution network and product portfolio with the focus of strategic growth and leveraging new opportunities in both India and international markets. We are confident in our ability to deliver sustainable value to all shareholders. I would now invite Mr. Gandhi to provide the highlights of the operational and financial performance Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone joining us today. Let me provide an overview of the financial performance for the second quarter and half year ended 30th June 2024. Revenue from operations for excise GST grew by 28.3% year on year in Q2 of 2024 to the level of 71,968 million. Consolidated sales volume reported a growth of 28.1%, reaching 401.6 million cases in Q2 of 2024, which includes about 28 million cases from Banco. Indian markets grew by 22.9%, while the international markets were almost flat, primarily on account of volumes in Zimbabwe getting affected due to portfolio transitioning to zero sugar without. Uh, affecting profits. CSG constituted 76%, juice 8%, and packaged drinking water 16% of the total sales volume in Q2 24. In the second quarter of 24, net realization per case was steady due to the consolidation of BEPCO, where realization per case uh, for own brands is much lower than the company's average. Our uh, gross margins improved by 220 two basis points to 54.7% from 52.5%. This improvement was due to timely procurement of storage and storage of PET chips to avail pricing benefits. This was a uh, partial trade-off between savings in the cost of uh, goods sold and partial offset of enhanced interest costs due to higher inventory carrying costs. Further, our ongoing focus on reducing sugar content and light weighting uh, packaging is also contributing to su sustainable growth in gross margins. Notably, about 46% of our consolidated sales volume now come from the low sugar or no sugar products. As a result of higher gross margins, EBITDA increased by 31.8% to the level of 19,912 million rupees. 
with EBITDA margins improving by 74 basis points to the level of 27.7% in Q2 of uh, calendar year 24. With enhanced capacity of preform manufacturing, majority of preform requirement is now being manufactured in-house, uh, leading to shifting of conversion costs from off to other expenses. Moreover, to get better operational efficiency and low production overheads, we have written off small residual uh, values of PPEs of certain lines from the acquired suboptimal sized old plants. All the new production facilities are fully integrated and backward integrated uh, on the and the renewable solar energy generation facilities, which will further help in reducing fixed costs. Depreciation increased by. 41% in Q2 of 2024 on account of the acquisition of BEPCO and the establishment of new production facilities. Finance costs increased by 86.2% primarily due to new production facilities. The acquisition of BEPCO and higher borrowing costs. PAT grew by 25.5% to the level of 12,618 million in Q2 of calendar year 24 from the level of 10,054 million in Q2 of 2023. This is driven by volume growth and improved margins partially offset by higher depreciation finance costs and the smaller PPE values to the extent of 70 crores, which uh, the company has written off. Uh, as of 30th June 2024, our net debt stood at the level of 58,808 million, up from 47,345 million as on December 31st, 2023. During H1 of 24, we spent up approximately 20,000 million on the capex of 24 and around 6,000 million for the capex of 25. Additionally, we acquired Vapco for 11,629 million rupees. Consequently, net debt increased by about 11,500 million with the remaining amount funded through internal approvals. These strategic investments have expanded our footprint and strengthened our presence across several dynamic markets, both in India and the African region. Despite these growth led investments, our financial stability remains strong with debt equity and debt EBITDA ratios standing at 0.67 and 1.37x. Uh, respectively, as on 30 June 2024. In H1 of 2024, the net capex capitalized amounted to approximately 30,000 million, excluding Bepco. This expenditure was primarily for setting up of new greenfield facilities, production facilities in Supa, Maharashtra, Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh, Kurda, Orissa, as well as for brownfield expansion in Morocco. As of June 30, 2024, the capital work in progress and capital advances totaled around 12,000 million, mainly for the DRC plant and phase two of the Gorok plant, which focuses on juice and value added dairy lines. The net capitalization capex for 2024 is expected to remain at the earlier uh, disclosed level of 36,000 million only. Considering the continued the robust demand for our products as well as diversification into uh, newer product categories, we shall be doing a capitalization of around 25,000 to 26,000 million for the season of 25, primarily towards the greenfield production facilities in India and the pre snack uh, foods manufacturing facilities in the African markets. Out of the planned capex, about rupees 3,000 million has already been spent till June 24, and we expect to spend about 10,000 million uh, more in the second half of 24. So basically more than 50% of the next year capex by December will be incurred as it is, and some part in 30th June, balance sheet is already shown up. Uh, working capital days increased to approximately 33 days as of 30th June 24, from around 21 days of 30th June 23. This increase is attributed to the strategic purchasing of PET chips in India and the inorganic expansion into new markets, including BEPCO and the DRC plants. And DRC plant, as indicated earlier, already has started commercial production on 22nd July uh, 24, and uh, we have a lot of good hopes out of it. To conclude, we remain committed to maintaining a strong financial position by focusing on the execution of multiple strategic initiatives that we believe 
will sustain our long-term growth trajectory. Our ongoing investments in expanding capacities, enhancing our network and on-ground infrastructure, and diversifying our product portfolio are expected to drive sustainable and continuous growth in the coming years. On that note, I come to an end of the opening remarks and would like to now ask the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Aditya Soman from CLSA India. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. So, two questions from my own. Uh, firstly, on uh, India growth, uh, can you give us a sense of how growth has panned out uh, in 2Q, especially since uh, we had a very strong, uh, I'm sorry, in, in 3Q, uh, in, in the first month of 3Q, especially since we had a very strong uh, calendar 3Q. And, and and related question to that, can you give us a sense of how uh, uh, the, 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 in this 23% volume growth that we saw in TQ, how the various segments have done, uh, particularly uh, energy drinks and, and CFD, if you can give us any sense of that. Thank you. So, uh, our Q3 is also growing at, in double digits, and we are quite happy with our growth. Q2 growth so, was close to 23% in India, which is a very healthy and a very nice growth. And uh, in the uh, breakup, I'll just give you the numbers for the growth. Uh, Aditya, basically, uh, as far as thing is concerned, as already uh, intimated in the first H1, it's 15 point some odd number, and rather than so the quarter specifically, if you're interested, is around 18%. So, string has stabilized, and we are... Uh, uh, or, you know, very happy to uh, say that we are holding up on to that in a competitive scenario and we're still uh, expanding uh, further. And uh, as far as uh, uh, the risk mix is concerned, we have increased the growth uh, in uh, juice, we have increased uh, uh, in uh, CSG, but we have deliberately kept the sale of uh, water uh, uh, quite uh, low in this quarter because uh, that uh, contribution from that, as indicated earlier, has been, uh, uh, you know, the margin is lower in case of water. Water we increase only in uh, uh, Morocco, where realization is uh, much higher as comparison to India. And as uh, Chairman said, the outlook uh, stays healthy going forward also. I understand very clear. And, and then just maybe a second question on these uh, new snacking opportunity. Uh, would uh, at a sort of margin level, uh, uh, this business be similar uh, to what you see uh, for beverages or uh, any sort of sense on how the margins uh, for uh, the snacks you see in both Morocco and, and then uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia? No, each country, the margins are different, but you know, overall, we are running at a very healthy margin of 27-28% uh, of uh, EBITDA, which is very healthy. Uh, this is for the season, and uh, Aditya, your question is about the uh, uh, snack foods or on the beverage for those days? On, on, on snack foods, so beverages obviously we get the uh, overall average, right? So on snack foods, would it be uh, very different from the beverages average or, or broadly in the same no, it would be actually better than the beverages. So snack food is quite healthy margins and it's a good business. That's why if you look at it, mostly it's kept by Pepsi themselves. <laughs> they have not, I mean... Uh, That's they, why have they not don't give it for franchising mostly. I no, understand, very clear. And and then would you look at this as like a stepping stone to hopefully getting more of these in, in other geographies? Well, we, we are hoping, we are open to taking as many countries they are willing to give us, <clears throat> but it would be in the African region only. It won't be, uh, they are not interested in giving it to us in India. So, it, But each country is a large market. If the three countries we have taken, 
uh, alone are 800 million dollars worth of uh, market for snacks <laughs> and aditya uh, if you remember uh, you know few quarters before when we said it's a step in the door when we had started the first co packaging from our cosi plant and after that i think we are regularly coming out with updates so the, in a short time i think that, that progress is uh, is uh, we feel by any standard is a good progress no absolutely no thank you thank you for your update thank you next question is from the line of gautam trivedi from nepian capital please go ahead yeah hi uh, uh, first of all uh, congratulations on yet another bumper quarter so uh, very happy shareholders uh, with respect to uh, the fact that you you are now at 4 million outlets uh, and the fact that as you just mentioned so my question was related to expanding the snack portfolio outside of kurkure specifically for india but uh, looks like you're saying that uh, pepsico per se is not uh, necessarily expanding that portfolio with us is there a chance that the way we have launched cream bell uh, can be launched at home as i just to give it back to the air gautam sorry to sorry you were yeah. okay. <clears throat> okay i'll just uh, get off my uh, uh, airpods give me one second please thank yeah. you I hope this is better. This is better. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So I guess my question is that, uh, as you just mentioned, Mr. Jaipuria, that uh, the PepsiCo is not expanding the portfolio for snacks outside of Kurkure for India as of today. If I understood that right, would that be correct? Well, they are keeping the complete snack portfolio for themselves. In right. India. Okay. We are only co-packing for them uh, in India. understood and that also uh, the cheeto brand got it so i guess my question is that uh, the way we since we already have an outreach to form in outlets the way we've launched a cream bell uh, milk milk products should should we or, or is there a, is there merit in getting into the snack food business ourselves with our own brands there is well that would be we would not like to do that and that would not make uh, our parent company happy so i don't think we would do, be doing that understood because okay. we are get, they, we are getting full support and we are and uh, especially in the african countries they are quite happy to give it to us so i think there is enough room for us to grow why go into competition with them which is which is fair which is fair now that's it from my side thank you so much and all the best uh, you know we're happy shareholders and uh, well done thank you very much gautam thank you i request all the participants kindly speak through the handset next question is from the line of avnish roy from nuama please go ahead yeah thanks uh, my first question is on the water business uh, so what we have seen uh, in this quarter so june quarter uh, the market leader in juice uh, business uh, they saw uh, an impact because of out of home travel being less uh, so they were expecting and maybe street was also expecting good double digit but uh, it will be lower than that similarly another listed player which is in water business they were also expecting very strong double digit but it will be lower than that so i wanted to understand in your business also when i see uh, this quarter versus last year same quarter uh, around 100 bits lower uh, water contribution is there so do you have also seen uh, some impact of less out of home travel well there is there is because at 45 48 degrees I mean, there is less traffic in the market which you also saw so there is a definite effect uh, and uh, we are also not going out of our way to push for that anyway and uh, one uh, follow up question on the coming quarter so i see your base in india is now 15 and 18% and uh, this uh, quarter the high rains of course is not conducive because the temperature will be lower and december quarter uh, the la nina impact generally the winter is harsher so would you be still confident that for the entire second half ty uh, you will be confident of double digit these are early days i understand but uh, given the base and given the seasonality would you still expect double digit growth in india yeah, yeah consolidated we see no reason why we should not be doing double digits 
ഫോർട്ടീസൺ so now with bavco coming in and the peak month for them is uh, uh, the fourth quarter and the same thing uh, will be for zimbabwe and uh, and drc coming. and drc drc is just started what you are seeing in my uh, 30th uh, june results is all the course uh, setting up of this uh, we should be mindful in africa we have in this calendar a double double capacity and uh, the results of that has not come only the cost we are seeing we are seeing the depreciation we are seeing the interest for that which we have participated uh, and uh, some bit of structuring uh, wherein uh, the uh, we have taken advantage in cork of the pet cost by stocking and the interest cost of which is getting reflected in the interest cost cost of interest was the highest at its peak and in the next uh, few months when this uh, cost will be coming down we, we the model stays uh, all these things i'm saying model stays <coughs> and the double digit has changed and exchange with the, these two uh, territories which uh, uh, for whom the season is going to be the fourth quarter and with south and west uh, which are uh, is flat seasonality there is no doubt why it should not be double digit sir uh, last question so on uh, back on africa so on africa if i see uh, another hpc company has uh, sold some part of africa because of uh, uh, maybe uh, the potential not uh, being uh, to the desired expectation and if i see per capita income of africa also last 10 years it is well below initial expectation so my specific question here is if pepsi uh, is is happy in some geographies of africa to give you what are the pros and cons and how will you also meet uh, because uh, currency fluctuation issues lack of democracy uh, or per capita income uh, uh, not uh, at all uh, meeting the expectation versus initial expectation what will be your proactive steps to overcome these see if you look at it the per capita consumption in africa is 5 to 6 times of that of india so the consumption is very high secondly the population growth in africa is close to 3% so every year there is 3% close to 3% people being added so there is a huge potential and also pepsi is very under penetrated in africa like drc it was a white patch in south africa we are 2% or 2.5% market share so there is nothing to go down there is only upside in everywhere which we have shown in the markets we have been every year we have gained share or increased our margins and gone done better so we don't see any reason in africa where we would be struggling or uh, i mean it might take little longer sometimes because each country is a different animal but we have been very successful and i don't see any reason why it should be not be the same going forward and you ask uh, question one is the per cap uh, income is low but as uh, chairman explained the per cap consumption is high which compensates much soft more. drink is food in africa which is very it's not a luxury it's a food every individual has soft drink in the afternoon and on the currency i think the currency the worst part is in zimbabwe and uh, it's before you how well we have managed in last few years it's a debt free company and uh, really growing the uh, sugar tax which came couple of quarters before uh, even the volume for in the interim in the transition came down but the margins were not affected and uh, now volumes also have started coming up so uh, everything is uh, you know the way of course uh, we have learned it trick in africa so to manage those so uh, i mean uh, africa has- but if you can manage it africa is a great business and going forward it look, looking very positive for us sir i understood on the positive just one question on your comment on why pepsi is willing to give some parts of africa but not willing to give india that will be essentially uh, uh, against so many countries and lack of democracy they have already given what are you talking about snacks or what are you talking about snacks snacks 
So snacks, they don't give. They don't give snacks anywhere in the world. This is the first time they have started giving snacks. So they will give it in the smaller territories. Snacks worldwide, they don't give franchise. Okay. We are one of the lucky ones who have got it initially. Yeah, thanks. That's all for my side. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Farsi from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congrats on a good set of numbers. My question is also on the foods business. So uh, while uh, 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 there is some idea on what is happening there in terms of uh, the company willing to give you franchisee, etc., as investors, uh, if you can give some better guidance on uh, how to estimate what kind of sales this business uh, could generate in the next couple of years, so that we can accordingly model it. Well, I think uh, the three countries we are looking at right now, in the next couple of years, we can definitely look at close to a hundred million dollars volume. And depending on which other countries we expand and what happens, but it's a growing market and it's a very lucrative and a uh, positive market in snacks because the capex are much lower and the turnovers are much higher. Uh, Percy, uh, just see the data points which we have already shared. One is the capex, second is the date by, from when the plants will be installed, third is the market size. As of now, only these things uh, should be sufficient because we have uh, only these uh, data points. So once this starts and the size of the market and the Pepsi presence wherever they are there, rest of the things are to be projected, but from the date by when the plants will be uh, ready. Because now as the new guidelines, we have to any new plant diversification, we have to inform. So we have informed. So we are now uh, we start working on uh, those things, except Morocco, where we had the selling and distribution agreement and the sales started ahead of time. Understood, understood, sir. Uh, second question is on uh, the CAPEX. Uh, if I look at your cash flow statement, in addition to the acquisition, there is a 2,000 crore of uh, CAPEX as per the cash flow. And if I look at the balance sheet, there is about a 3,000 crore of uh, capitalization. So if you can just help me for the remaining half of the year, how much we should see CAPEX in the cash flow and how much more in terms of capitalization? Yeah, uh, Percy, uh, if you remember on the uh, 31st December, we had said out of this year's 2,400 uh, uh, approximately, we had uh, amount sitting in uh, CWIP. Uh, and uh, we capitalize the year when we put to use. So we link it up capitalization to the uh, season for which it's made and uh, putting in CWIP as in when the cash flow happens. So out of those 3,000, 3,000, uh, sorry, 2,400 plus 1,200, 3,000 is capitalized, balance 600 roughly is under, that will be capitalized later. And the major part of that was DRC, which got capitalized on 22nd of July, 400 plus, and uh, 200 roughly is uh, in Gorakhpur, which is in, uh, which is in uh, a, a still work in progress. So coming back to 3,600 as indicated in December will be the capitalization in this year as of now. And uh, for the next year, about uh, 2,100 or 2,200 for another new plants coming up in the areas as the arbitrage for uh, trade and uh, near the market and uh, to take uh, the competition uh, you know, more effectively. So out of that, uh, we may be incurring about 1,000 uh, crore, 200 out of, uh, and additionally about 200 we have already incurred. It is sitting out of our cash flow for the season of 2025. So approximately uh, 1,200 to 1,300 for season 25 will be incurred cash flow wise, not capitalized. And uh, uh, capitalization next year, as of now, if you ask me, may be about 25, 2600. It will be 1,100 crore lower than the capitalization of the current year. Understood. So basically next six months, uh, the cash outflow you are saying will be about 1,200 crores for next six months. A thousand crore roughly. Okay. Okay. Crore. Yeah. Well, uh, Two hundred is already incurred. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you very much. That's all from me.
Thank, Thank you. you. Next question is from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Sir, hi. Uh, uh, congratulations on a very good performance and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, this 23% uh, growth, uh, uh, when we compare it to about 40-45% expansion in our capacity, uh, I guess some of it is uh, due to delay in opening of uh, some of the plants uh, which happened during the quarter. Uh, the question is to check, uh, as in uh, even for a short period of time, did we touch the peak capacity uh, uh, in, in, in the June quarter? Well, very short period before the, you know, some of our new plants started because some of the plants got delayed slightly because of the freight issues, because of uh, this war between uh, and the uh, containers got delayed. Moreover, 45% was for CSD for India. So uh, I think if we do the maths, right, we are very well near to that. Got it, sir. Got it. Uh, second question is on uh, on um, uh, margin front. Uh, our standalone EBITDA margin improved uh, largely in line with the uh, gross margin improvement uh, that we've seen. Uh, however, in the console level, uh, there is some uh, mismatch between uh, gross margin gains and EBITDA margin gains. Uh, what is the reason for that, sir? So, South Africa, once again, it's to about gross margin. Yeah, this is uh, South Africa, uh, basically, which has come up with own brands and their, uh, the, these ratios are different, which uh, have slightly, you know, we will become tuned to this because this was the first quarter. South Africa uh, ratios are slightly different. One, it was the first quarter. Second, it was the winter quarter. Which is the worst quarter for uh, South Africa, for the African region and especially South Africa. So I think, given another quarter, we'll be pretty used to South African systems and market. And we are just correcting all the weaknesses of the old bottler. So to be prepared for the next season, which is coming up in the fourth quarter of our year. So you will see major changes coming in South Africa. And, uh, the, you know, this uh, two uh, quarters, basically, one, we were setting right in South Africa, and secondly, we were uh, installing uh, the uh, DRC, which is now operational and start uh, contributing from this quarter. Its expenses, interest, a lot of things had started coming in uh, much before. Good Mr. Gandhi. A uh, couple of bookkeeping questions. Uh, uh, the working capital days have inched up to 31. Uh, uh, can we expect normalization back to 20 odd days uh, at CY24 end? Uh, in fact, in a couple of weeks, you will see the difference. Uh, as already explained, uh, about 250 crore uh, money, uh, you know, excess PET chips were purchased uh, to take advantage of the pricing which has helped us in a substantial increase in the gross margins, but partially offset, very clearly we have come out, is by way of increase in inventory and increase in the interest cost, inventory carrying cost. But ultimately, it was uh, making sense, it was uh, bringing in savings, so we decided in increasing <laughs> So uh, that will be uh, in the normal course, if we stop purchases, it will be liquidated in, uh, uh, you know, Next couple of weeks itself. Couple of months. Couple of months. Right. And uh, so you mentioned about margins in the snacking business better being better than the uh, uh, overall beverages business. Uh, can you throw some light on asset turns uh, for this business? Are these also better versus uh, uh, the beverage business? What is it? Asset turn. It should be equal to uh, this. The only advantage is that we don't have to run that business three shifts and. Uh, we, that's not that complicated we, because uh, here in this business we have to do adjustment in the off season, reduce the staff and single shape. The and seasonality curve is much better in uh, snacks. It's a flat. So it's reasonably flat. I mean, not 100% flat, but it's reasonably flat. So you get a much better return on your capital. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Next question is from the line of Nitesh Tad from Bauman Capital Management. Please go ahead. 
Hi, thank you for the opportunity. My question is regarding the usage of recycled uh, PET chips. Uh, so, if my interpretation is correct, uh, you will have to use 30% recycled content, uh, I think, from 1st of April 2025. So, uh, given, I believe there are capacity constraints in the market, uh, and Indorama joint venture uh, potentially is not uh, active yet. So, uh, how, how are you planning to comply with the regulations from 1st of April? No, our plant will be operational next year. The joint venture will be operational next year, and which will be sufficient to give us uh, close to 30% of our requirement between what we are buying and what the plant will be able to produce. So we don't see any challenge. And uh, as a trial, uh, Pepsi Black uh, already we have started with the recycled plastic yeah. uh, last quarter. Got it. Why are you going to find the uh, recycled plastic from outside? Got it. And so, what will be the impact of uh, of this on on your uh, cost of uh, pet chips? Uh, would it be gross margin uh, dilutive? Also, do you expect any kind of uh, relaxations in this uh, from the government or, or regulators? Well, I I don't know if uh, the relaxation part, but it's not very negative. It's uh, very close to the pet chips, uh, original pet chips. So. I don't think it's, a, it's a much of a margin issue. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sheila Rati from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question was, sir, uh, if you could give some flavor on the market share which we have in Africa for the beverages business. We understand in South Africa it's low single digit, but if, we, if you could remind us uh, what is our market share across the markets we are present in? Well, each country has a different market share. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it will become very complicated to start. Uh, Sheila, as Deepak has already informed you, so we have different share in different markets. Uh, South Africa, we just exist. And uh, in Zimbabwe, last year we finished at 71% on full year basis, and we finished about 35% in Zambia, and uh, including water, we uh, did 30% uh, in uh, Morocco. Okay. Um, just to follow up on uh, the question asked earlier on working capital days, so you uh, mentioned that this will be resolved in the next couple of months. Does that also mean for uh, the consolidated changes also, which we are seeing because of uh, Bevco? Uh, because, you know, inventory days are higher, data days are higher, as well as, you know, the receivable days are higher. So just want to understand every, uh, whether all this will, uh, you know, improve in the coming months. Uh, well, uh, as far as the effect of Bevco is concerned, it will take a, a time. It will start showing from uh, in next quarter, but uh, it will take a lot of time because there are a lot of fundamental things have to be uh, corrected. Uh, their uh, go to the market has to be deepened where we can dictate uh, the terms. Presently, uh, the, the most of their uh, volume sales are uh, to the uh, large, uh, uh, those uh, trading house, modern trade uh, centers. Uh, where uh, it's very difficult to dictate any terms and rather they dictate uh, the terms for the number of days. So that uh, in the near future will not happen uh, in a couple of uh, days, but a uh, couple of uh, months, it will, uh, in, but in a couple of uh, uh, months, uh, years, it will definitely be taken care of, only to that effect. As far as India is concerned, it's well in shape. Uh, because India, let's not forget, we are into this business for 50 years. And uh, there, uh, it's uh, just four months since uh, we have gone there. And uh, we, at least, uh, firstly, are making assessment what are the things to be done. Second, uh, on uh, the margin front, the realization is much lower, uh, about 30% lower than the normal Pepsi in that country itself. The uh, mix, which used to be 15%, has already gone to 18.5%. And, a percent, and uh, gradually, it... Uh, Pepsi sale uh, mix will start going up, that is going to help. Then we have to create our own um, larger uh, facilities with the economies of scale, like in India, uh, integrated, as we mentioned, all of our three plants started in this year are with the solar uh, electricity. I mean, uh, we have to pay uh, just 10, 20% of the power bill, rest for, to the solar cells. We generate our own power. 
we do 100% backward integration in house in last year uh, you know we were still a small portion of the you know when we had purchased territories from pepsico we were getting co packages uh, some of the pet from outside where 30% of the pet price was going as conversion charges so this time on uh, everything is uh, you know produced uh, converted into the platforms in house so that uh, new plants are uh, uh you know to be integrated zero freight zero carrying cost zero packaging cost the preforms are manufactured there simultaneously within few days gets consumed also in the production so all changes in india we are aware and the same are to be replicated it will take time but the other side we should not forget i mean at so cheap uh, such a country with five working plants getting it for 1200 crore it was a steal so we have to now cash on that we have taken a leap step but uh, as its results started coming in no this will take time understood thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of sanjaya for ambassador please go in it's a thank for the opportunity and congratulations once again for delivering uh, superb numbers uh, so uh, you have already explained but still uh, need a bit of clarification that uh, uh, your uh, staff cost and other expenses as well as finance cost has expanded both uh, for the stand alone as well as consolidated entity Uh, uh, so, no, no, no. I, uh, if you can just explain, like, why, why such a big jump in uh, staff cost, particularly? Uh, uh, here, uh, you know, nine plants uh, are added, uh, you know, in this quarter over the last uh, year. So, uh, five in South Africa and uh, three in India and one DRC. So. Uh, But, uh, you know, you have to, and the results of that has uh, yet to come in. So this is what I was saying that it will take uh, some time. The things will stabilize. Expense side has already is come in. The revenue uh, will start building up. And uh, South Africa, we are giving example. But South Africa, it was a peakest season. Something like uh, if we calculate the interest cost and depreciation in India for November, December, January. So it was. those three months winter months in south africa and uh, we will see in the season uh, two quarters as it is this will improve and the secondly the steps which you are taking they will also bring in the advantage and the third economy is a scale backward integration today they have to buy everything from outside not like india we manufacture everything in house except uh, concentrate or uh, sugar uh, we do everything in house there they do concentrate uh, you know themselves ap One and a half percent is their own bank sales, but they do, they don't have the ability to upcharge in the market. The they are treated as B brands. Their realization per case is thirty percent lower than if we manufacture on the same equipment with the same sugar Pepsi brand, which is a much premium, well accepted, recognized brand is there. And on the availability side, as I mentioned, we have to do a lot. presently they are depending too much on the modern trade yeah understood and uh, so thanks a lot uh, that this clarifies uh, last thing i just wanted to check is that uh, you will continue to be on on investment phase uh, for quite some time to come which is in a way a good thing because you have that kind of a growth opportunity for you um, ahead of you and uh, but is there any way to articulate um, that what kind of minimum uh, return on capital employed or uh, any other risk parameter like net debt to equity or something which you you are closely monitoring while you are driving your growth trajectory yes i in fact uh, thank you sanjay uh, you have answered all my questions uh, firstly the debt equity debt ebitda we are really cognizant of that and we are monitoring and based upon the same we pick up any capital expenditure and there was only one occasion in 2019 when we felt we are acquiring south and west and we really came out with the qip but uh, presently uh, you know all these ratios are well under uh, uh, control and in a very happy situation uh, so uh, the uh, i mean uh, so there is nothing to worry all these things are taken care of. yes thanks a lot sir thank you thank you
Next question is from the land of Amit Purohit from Elara Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Congratulations and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just on the uh, comment that you made on international volumes, which are uh, flat X of BFCO, uh, um, and that uh, you ascribe it to uh, shift towards uh, zero or low sugar. Uh, so, uh, one, uh, a, a, while you indicated 46% of the volumes is low sugar, uh, much of, I mean, um, majority of that would be in the international market, right? Just one clarification. That's right. Yeah. That's so, right. yeah, and this uh, shift has been happening for quite some time, right? Why, why uh, has the impact been seen probably in this quarter and how long, uh, how do we think about it uh, going forward uh, in this transition, so how long? The impact was temporary, which was mainly in Zimbabwe, which was the main large international market for us before yeah. South Africa and, and uh, DRC starts. So, there, there was a special tax on sugar, so the, there was a complete change in the portfolio, and that's why this quarter the mark, uh, and the prices had to go up. So that's why there was an effect for this quarter, which has already changed, and the market is growing back into normal, and we are growing in that territory again. So this quarter, you will see all uh, will not see any flat or uh, no growth in the international markets. Rather, you'll see healthy growth in the market. Sure. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of cost of Pavaskar from Sher Khan by BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my question is on the realization front. So in this quarter, our realization stood flat, and uh, we have uh, uh, stated that uh, because of the consolidation of the Alcobio business, uh, where the margins are quite uh, lower, uh, the realization stood flat. So considering the fact that, uh, you know, in the second half of the year when season for Africa business is quite uh, good, uh, should we expect realization to be lower in the second half uh, of the year uh, on year on year basis? Uh, Kostov here, uh, there are two uh, things to be, uh, you know, two engines. Uh, one is South Africa, yes, it will bring it down. Another is DRC, maybe that uh, takes it up. Let's wait uh, till then. And, uh, uh, you know, we are just analyzing this ourselves, actually. And maybe both uh, compensate and still we may be back to the same month. As revenue growth also per case uh, failing growth also and moreover in uh, south africa by then uh, the mix will also be changing like from 15 and disclosed earlier 18 and a half especially in south africa without adding even a single bottle capacity without doing backward integration if we could increase that uh, so already and the, the top line also has already grown at, from the level where it was and uh, Hopefully, we will be happy if we are keeping uh, able to keep the trend in the same data where it is coming. Right, right, right. So, uh, so sec uh, maybe quarter three, quarter four might give us a better understanding how the realization would uh, pan out. That's right. Yeah, and just just an under from the understanding point of view, uh, we are seeing the contribution of no sugar or low sugar products going up. Are margins in this, uh, sorry, are uh, realization and margins in this product much better than your, you know, the conventional, uh, uh, you know, Pepsi products? That's right. Our margins are better with low sugar and uh, uh, no sugar. So once the contribution, uh, you know, uh, pick up, I think that should also add to your profitability going ahead? Yeah, it will um, depend which country where, but it will definitely help. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Onka from Sri Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Is it possible to give the volume growth, uh, volume growth, or uh, how much, how many million cases you sold? I mean, not you, uh, Bevco in the last season, which is the fourth quarter. Uh, Quarter-wise, I don't remember. I think in the year they perhaps sold 112 million last year. Uh, the entire financial year you are saying? That's right. And last calendar year. Okay, last calendar year. And this quarter it was 28 million cases, right? Yes. 
uh, only for the current quarter you are saying. Yes. Sir. And uh, if you, you know, you are making me to do some math. Uh, so one fourth of one hundred and twelve is twenty-eight, and this is the weakest quarter. Okay, so this is the weakest quarter, and the yeah. yeah please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. No. No. The, I mean, uh, this tells the total story. Correct. Yeah. So what you are seeing is uh, earlier you mentioned that you will be seeing quite a lot of changes in Bevco in the upcoming season. So I mean, I mean, yeah. So I mean, can you just uh, share some light on what kind of changes we are expecting there? No, no. Changes means our go-to market, our backward integration. I mean, it will take time, but we are going to correct, and that's why we have taken the market with such a low share. It will take X amount of time, but if you look at it, what the total year volume was, we are achieving that practically in the lowest quarter, uh, which is the poorest quarter of that year. Okay, now that you have understood the market a little bit better when you acquired the company, can you throw a little bit more light on uh, what kind of uh, effort? You know, give us a, give us a, it's a new country. It's only two, three months we have taken. I've given you enough that the worst winter we are doing the same numbers what we should do. Now you have to, I can't give you the complete exact details. I wish, give me a couple of quarters to really understand the country. Okay, uh, one more thing is that uh, you had mentioned that uh, DRC will be a big opportunity. Uh, can you just throw more light on that? It's a big uh -huh. opportunity because there is more than 100 million population and it's uh, practically on the equator, so it's summer all the time. The seasonality is very low there. Uh, I mean, there's no change in seasonality throughout the year, so it's a good market and it will be a constant uh, throughout the year market. So. And right now, how much, like, what's the presence of foreign beverages over there or through PepsiCo? We have just started eight days. Eight days. Okay. Eight days. Ah, okay. So, okay, so can you say that, uh, I mean, apart from India and uh, South Africa, this can be a biggest market for you? No, no, I won't say it's the biggest market, but it will be a decent market for us. Okay. India, okay. of course, is much bigger and it will always yeah. be the biggest market. What about the uh, consumption wise per capita consumption there? Yes. Africa per capita consumptions are all high everywhere, South Africa being the highest. I don't have the exact number, but it would be at least three to four times of India. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shraman Rajpurovit from Nakshatra. Assignment, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Hello. Congratulations for good success number. Thank you. So, for my question is, what is your guidance for next year? How much percent we we can grow next year? We can't give you exact guidance. We have said double digit looks feasible, and that's what we that's what we can tell you. Okay, sir. One, one more question. What kind of growth we can expect in next two quarters? Huh? Next two quarters. Well, again, the same thing. We are saying we should grow double digits. That's the guidance we are giving, and that's what is what is feasible. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as a last question. I'll now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any uh, further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our investor relations team. Thank you once again for your interest and support and for taking the time out to join us on this call. Look forward to interacting with you all soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Varun Beverages Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.